here we are. And tonight's menu is, guess, sausage and peppers and onions and mushrooms. So it's taken us right back to the ballpark in Fenway. And sometimes you just have to have that. Oh, nuts here. Get your nuts. <laughs> so growing up in... in the awesomeness that is the Boston area, you know, like there were always some really cool things going on, concerts, picnics, of course, you know, lots of county fairs everywhere all over the state, much like in other places in the country. But there was one place in particular, I used to see a lot of shows, go to a lot of concerts when I was a kid, in fact, I don't even want to tell you how many, but one of the coolest things that what happened is when, at the end of the concert, you go to a place called Faneuil Hall. And Faneuil Hall is this huge market, open marketplace area. Um, now it's mostly just really high-end shops trying to sell you tchotchkes and uh, supposedly historical things. And, you know, beautiful coach bags. Yeah, fake cheers, memorabilia, you know, stuff like that. But um, And beautiful coach bags. Anyway... <laughs> So, the cool thing about this is after the shows, you know, you'd be, you'd be coming out of the concert and the, the street vendors would be there with their grills, cooking in the, right in the in Daniel Hall. And it was just an amazing thing, you know, to smell all that going on, um, you know, happening right, right around you as you're walking around. So... And of course, you know, the old joke was, you can smell the street meat, but don't eat the street meat. It's always kind of like a little dubious, right? You don't know how long the guys were out there with their cars. But as time would go on, those things do, you start to get to know, so here's the peppers and the mushrooms and onions. And all this is going on first on medium low heat. What a wonderful sous chef you have. Yeah, somebody did a good job. And, uh, so we're going to start this part, which should take a little bit longer to do than the actual sausage. So did you put oil there at the base? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a light coating of oil underneath all this pepper and onion. Okay. And as you can see, it's already getting a good sizzle. Yeah, not only you really can't see it, but you can certainly hear it. Yeah. So I pardon the video, everyone. Um, Jerry wears a headlamp so he can see, and it just makes the video, you know, the pictures that much brighter. But trust me, they're onions and peppers and mushrooms, <laughs> and they already smell amazing. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting old, so my eyesight's not what it used to be. Um, so yeah, there's nothing in the world better than that experience. And you would eat the street meat and get really sick, and usually wind up bagging out from work the next day, I feel like most people. Because, you know, it didn't go well. Oh, and I think we should mention, babe, that... If you'll notice, our our griddle shrunk a little bit. Well, right. we got the 22-inch for camping, and it came in the other day. So we had to season it today anyway, we being cherry. And um, so we thought we'd give it a shot and get it all warmed up and ready for uh, the camping trip camping expedition which starts in April so this is cool because the grill plate itself comes off and then and that's the heavy part and then the hood comes down and the legs contract and fold in and it has a very small footprint which is why it's perfect for camping tailgating is it 22 inch yeah, or 20. It's okay. So there's also a 28 inch Blackstone for tailgating. They call that the tailgating rig. 
And you can actually um, put this whole unit on a tabletop and just go see yeah. and um, You don't have to use the legs. No, which I don't know that that's the best idea. At least with these, they can help you try to get it level. And, and that's pretty important. Yeah. So that's Agreed. The grease goes in the right direction and you don't have stuff going a little crazy, right? So How come the right way. side garage is open? To create a vacuum of air. Oh. So that we keep the smoke from. That's why I'm freezing my patooties off. Sorry. It's all right. It's worth it. Oh, yeah. So we've been watching all sorts of YouTube grilling videos. Yeah, thank God for YouTube and all the wonderful people that have so many great videos out there because we, we are able to, with our subscription, see it all commercial free. Yeah. And thank God for that because, frankly, what's been on TV in the last couple of weeks isn't worth watching. Yeah. And we absolutely love the Griddle Guys and the Hungry Hussy. Yep. They're just so much fun and they go out of the box and do different things that, you know, a regular griller or even a griddler wouldn't think that you could do. And it's, it's just Sorry. so much fun. Like, like, light olive oil. Light olive oil. Um, we had a discussion about this today, and we realized this is just kind of like frying food. So, do you worry about calories? Do you worry about, um, you slit those, right? Oh, no, you don't no. slit them on a grill, right? Hmm. Um, you worry about frying everything. Well, we do what we can to... To make it less fatty and oily, light olive oil, grapeseed oil is a good option because that's very locale and has a very high burning point. Um, so, I don't know. It's kind of worth it to me. I think we discussed this today. And so, picture this. The griddle is there. Jerry's table is there. And right here, we're going to have the Coleman yeah, grill. Coleman. So he's going to have a little workstation or cook station where um, we're going to be able to cook up some amazing chow. And there's even enough room for me to be in there if I need to work one or the other. And a tripod. Well, I'm a tripod. So all we got to do is hook the uh, Canon camera up there on the shoe and get that going for you. With also free Al's hands up and all Yeah, I so I can cook. Get some lighting on this. Um, and let us know if the audio is really bad. I I seem to think it was okay, other than the loudness of the grill activity, which there's no way really to get around that. I think the further I stand away, the better. But you can see the smoking peppers. They're cooking up so nicely. And Jerry is just an amazing shorthand cook. <laughs> and he does short such... What is it called? Short order. Short order cook. Oh, it's shorthand cooking. That's <laughs> I'm dialing it in. There's no doubt about that. But he's always excelled at that. He was always in charge of breakfast and always in charge of, like, peppers and onions and... You know, that was kind of like a staple with us. It was just a given. And since then, he's expanded quite a bit. And I found out he makes a better chicken parmesan than I do. So I'm willing to suck it up. I tend to do things a little more gourmet. And he does, like... Oh, and he does the turkey. But he's amazing. He's an amazing cook, and I love to watch him cook, especially on the griddle. Because it's just, like, natural to him. We've had these griddles for, what, four days. And it's just like he's been doing it forever. Oh, like riding a bike. Oh, those are browning up nice. Really nice. Um, yeah, I see that. They look great. Yeah. 
really cool. Um, you know, again, pretty low in the heat. But, what do you have the heat set at? Well, I had them on medium low for a while just to get the veggies to break down because they tend to, especially the peppers, they tend to hang on. The peppers take longer than onions, and yeah. the mushrooms just have to sweat. So I just shut this burner to low for this side. Where okay. I'm keeping all this over there. Keep in mind, I need to keep space available for when I'm ready. For the buns. The buns. You can't have an authentic Fenway sandwich without having those. Oh, do I need to get butter? No, we don't have time for the butter, boy. Down. Okay. And it'll sit on that, and then it'll brown right up from that as well. Yeah, I think we guys we told you, oh yeah, when I was going through the bucket about the butterer, <laughs> which is like, yeah. I don't know, we're not going to bring that camping, I don't think. Yeah, we are. We are? Sure. All right. But the other cool thing that came today was our breakfast kit. So. Swirling around, sorry if you got dizzy. Our new. Pork. Can't really see it oh, with your light. There you go. Yeah, so it's got the pancake maker. Don't move it. The pancake maker, the bacon press, which is key for me, and two egg rings. And we have a whole bunch of egg rings anyway. Yeah. I don't know if the silicone would hold up on the griddle or not, but we've got four silicone ones. You might be two boxes of griddle, but I don't know. We'll have to research that. But this is smelling amazing, and we've been watching these griddle shows, like videos all day, working up an appetite. Of course, we went out and took care of some business. We have to get ready for a big partial move tomorrow. Yeah, life happens fast around here. Yeah, we don't, you know, we took the... So we have... Two new trucks. One is an F-350 that we got to haul our RV. And we had to get a tonal cover on it. So the dealer installed that today. And um, so that'll be good in case. It's been snowing a little bit lately. Not a lot, but we've gotten a couple inches. Just enough to make it a pain in the butt not having a cover on the back of the Ford 350, so. Yeah, because we actually tend to be the kind of people who like to clean vehicles when we're driving after a snowstorm. Yeah. Unlike some people, we seem to like to have a good lap, but everyone else is expensive, so the vehicle spews snow, snow. over the highway. Yeah, I'm uh, very excited about this. It's one of those weird foods, right? Like, you know, you, you smell it in your head, you remember it, and then you just want it. So I think one of the other things that is really cool about this is how quickly you can put something like this together and then how quick and easily it cleans up, right? Like, I mean, this is absolutely just so much, oh, now I'm smelling it. Now the wind came back up. Now, are we able to get a bit of a char on those peppers and onions? Yeah, it's happened. Yeah? Yeah. So cool. If you want to come in, I'll get out of the way. All right. I'm coming in slow. See if you Move your head the other way. Yeah, see how beautiful that is? You can see the onions are getting a little brown. We got some char on the peppers. Looking good. Sausage is good. Just got to cover all those bare spots. All right. Yeah, I'm working on it. Thank you. You know, the puzzle. Gotta keep moving the pieces around. But these are incredible griddles. It's just, honestly, you can cook anything you want on it. And if you saw our steak video, our tri-tip video, I really love the, the crust 
on that. Um, it wasn't oily or greasy at all. It no. was just absolutely delicious. It was. But I still, I am still of the opinion that I like the grill better for steak and the hamburgers and that kind of thing. So once we get where we're going in April, we're going to have a cook-off. And we're going to cook two identical steaks, as identical as you can get them. And we're going to try one on each and see which one's better. Or they might each have individual properties that are better than the other. We just don't know. But... So they're, they're parallel, parallel instead of a H pattern. Correct. So you can wind up with more cool spots on that grill. Griddle. Yeah. Do with this one, and that's okay. Cool spots are actually good. So this makes using the small one a little more challenging, right? A little bit, yeah. You, you have to be a little more mindful of what you're sitting and how long you let it sit. But the beauty of it is, much like the 36, all this veggie is just sitting there staying nice and warm. So nothing's getting cold. Even with the burner on. Even with the burner on. So now I'm just going to continue to utilize um, this side right under the burner because I know those two Renturi uh, H's are right here and they cut across. So I'm utilizing the middle part of the grill, which should be the hottest remaining piece, while this is basically just keeping everything warm. And, and do you find that the practice makes the theory? In other words, you're assuming that because the burner's off that it's only keeping it warm. Do you find that that's true? It has been so far. Okay. Um, because you are getting much like if you cook on a normal grill with indirect heat, yeah, it's, it's essentially accomplishing the same thing. And you got to remember that this burner surface, you know, the, the, the entire griddle surface stays almost uniformly hot if both of the burners are on the same temperature. Right. Um, so there's a lot to be said for that as well, right? I mean, the, the way you cook with this is a little different than you do on a normal. Um, gas grill. Here's a picture update. It's amazing. Yeah, it's small like Yaki Way out here. So you ready? Oh, uh, yeah. So, these are charbroiled grilling mitts. And what I've found is they work fantastic for griddling because they're actually thermally, they have some thermal sheeting in them. Um, it's not just because my hands are cold, because believe me, when you're griddling, your hands do not stay cold. Mine are freezing. Yes, well, sorry about that. <laughs> but they are really good. I've used them with grilling as well. And you can just, I can pick up those hot grates on the grill and move them or pick them up if I if something falls between the grates or something and I don't even know I'm touching anything hot so those are really incredible mitts and I just picked them up by accident one thing I'm definitely say is you have got to be so careful with children around the griddle yes because this and thing, pets 
and Allison's. And me. <laughs> Um, because you're going to have heat across this entire surface and even along the backs and the sides. Um, it is not, you don't want to start your dinner with a trip to the ER. Unless you're into that. Kind of thing. But, um, yeah, just a word to the wise. And just stay hot for quite a while. Um, so if you have not already, if you have small children, um, really done a good job of educating them on cooking safety, that's going to be something you're going to want to do pretty pretty quickly with one of these in the arsenal because it is, uh, yeah, you don't want to have a bad day. And just while we're waiting for this to cook, I have to promote an item that I love. There's no affiliation here. These are Viking metallic bowls with uh, silicone on the bottom so that they don't slide. And they nest. There's like six of them. And each one of them has a top. And I picked those up at Sam's Club. Probably Costco would have them as well since they're affiliated. But we, I bought those for the camper because they're nested and they don't take up a lot of room like my glass bowls do. But I find I'm using those in the house now because they're just so cool. They have the tops. And the biggest one is absolutely huge. Just absolutely gigantic. And I don't know the specifics about it. But if you can find those bowls, I... <laughs> Honestly, I would get two sets. I would get another set and keep one in the RV and one in your house because they are amazing. They're our go-to for everything now. They're very easy to clean and um, they look good. The tops fit well. You nest them with the tops on them. And it just, it works perfectly. It's just incredible. And the funny thing was, I went there, and they had no more boxes left. <laughs> they just had the display model. <laughs> and I wanted them so badly, so I just took the display model. And um, it still rung out and everything. So I don't know if they just hadn't refreshed their inventory or whatever, but that was one less cardboard box for Jerry to have to cut up. So it works out well. Done. That's his job. He cuts up all the cardboard boxes. Yeah. And I don't know about you guys, but we get Amazon or any other yeah. deliveries like three or four a day. It's half a week slow. There you go. So, that's and three that's days. And that's on top of our normal recycling stuff. So and there's still more you haven't touched yet. Yeah. So. Well, I, I have the whole box from this thing still to break down. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I saved him a box. Hard I do box. that as often as I can. Yeah, he's so good to me. I try. Oh, yeah. No affiliation because I don't even know what the name brand is, but probably with this model. You're definitely going to want to invest. I just happen to have one of these because I use them all the time. It's just a simple magnetic level. Small. And what that's going to do is help you level the base before you start to put heat on the griddle. And you know, I know a lot of people are probably thinking, what are you doing grilling inside your garage? Well, if you can't see. We have the whole bay window door open here. The other one behind it is open. There's our snow plow. Yeah. So there are snow plow. Snow blower. Can't say. <laughs> Living in upstate New York, not Alaska. But um, oh, what a smell! You know, I'm hungry. Good. Don't forget the buns. I'm not going to forget the buns. 
Never hear the end of it if I forgot the bun. I love my rolls toasted. I just, I love them. And Jerry's not a big roll toaster except for this dish. And, um, so I always, I do always have to remind him about the rolls. Yep, so, again, got a lot of, a lot of oil on here. Now. That, that combination of the sausage and the actual all oil kind of coming together. And now we're just going to take these. They've already been pre-sliced upstairs. Walk in some of that awesome flavor. Look, I lost with one of these rolls. That happens with these. That's all right. You can have that one. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. It's all about these guys right here going back in. That's right. And uh, as you can see, here, let me get the light out of the way. No, it's okay. Um, this angle works. These are really like amazing. They're done. done. Yeah, they're yeah. good. I don't tend to, I know a lot of people would leave these on a lot longer, but I just want them warmed up. I don't like them seared completely through. I don't either. Honestly, yeah. that, like, that's perfect. Right there. Yeah. Just a little bit of a crust. You know they're hard. Exactly. So they can support what's going in them. Right. So that's good enough for me. Good. We're in agreement. Yes. All right, so and my fingers are about to fall off, and I'm showing you your, I'm showing everyone your coat, and your ass. Excellent. <laughs> I'll have to take measurements and see how much my ass grows after having this around for a few more. Uh, yeah. Plus, right? All right, so here comes the first one, and uh, what I tend to like to do is take some of the peppers mushrooms and onions first and I think that's about one person's share yep looks about right yeah yep and unlike a Philly cheesesteak I would put down on top of all this right and pick the cheese right up off with it and there you go all right plated yummy um this one's going to be a little harder to manage just because it's busted away broke happens. And, uh, today I'll happily go upstairs and scoop all this back up and eat it. Because it's just that kind of good. And to me, food like this is sort of a form of a comfort food, right? 